Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Kim Singh here. I'm a secondary maths high school teacher. And recently there's this video that's been gaining a lot of traction about a different way to multiply 35 times 12. Uh, I've been getting tagged a lot in it as well, so I really want to give the video a watch and let you know my thoughts. Let's jump into it. Your children have been learning how to do area model to solve multiplication problems. This is very different from the way that we were taught in school. We have our multiplication problem, 35 times 12. The first thing we need to do after that is expand these two numbers. We need to break it down into its tens and its ones. I've got three tens, which is 30, and five ones, so that is 30 plus five. 12 is one ten plus Two ones. So right from the get-go, we're doing something slightly different. Rather than using that standard algorithmic method of um, multiplying two numbers together that you're more used to seeing, um, we're starting off by breaking up those numbers, and we call that decomposing. And decomposing is really good for students to help them get a, a play and a feel for numbers. Um, they, they recognize that larger numbers can be broken up into smaller ones. And one place this is really good for is uh, mental arithmetic. Um, different people see uh, problems differently and so breaking up those numbers into different ways to help us add or subtract numbers together is going to be really good uh, for a younger student. And not just for younger students but even at the high school level um, when we're looking at a uh, skill called factorizing we actually have a technique called a decomposition method and it utilizes that same skill that we use for numbers but instead uh, using algebra and um, using those terms to break them up uh, into two components. Next step would be to draw a large box. Okay, and on this box we're going to put both of our expanded numbers. So on the top I'm going to put 30 plus 5 and on the side I'm going to put 10 plus 2. Now imagine that most people's initial reactions are, well oh, this seems kind of confusing or I haven't seen anything like this before. Um, and the reason I'm laughing is because I've actually used this in one of my classrooms. Um, so I teach at a secondary level, obviously the skill that I was teaching was slightly different, um, but it was a similar idea, using a visual tool um, to try and um, help students understand um, what was actually going on in that problem. Stick around the end and I'll talk a bit about how that went down and um, whether it was successful or not. Starting with our very first number on the top, we say 10 times this, 10 times that. I like to say 1 times 3 is 3, and how many zeros do we have? We've got 2, so we attach them to the end of the number. So 10 times 30 is 300. 10 times 5 is 50, so it goes in the first box. This diagram is uh, essentially a tool that helps us promote something we call mathematical thinking. And, and that's essentially taking a problem and rather than just trying to look at it and find an answer or, or a solution, uh, we want students to develop their own understanding um, for what's actually going on here. And this is also starting to touch on something we call the multiple intelligence theory. Uh, when we think about intelligence or IQ, uh, it's very easy to think about someone who can just perform well on a test. Um, but what Gardner says is that there's a whole variety of areas uh, where uh, people can display their intelligence. Uh, for example, um, while one of those ways can be a logical, mathematical way of thinking, um, someone who can maybe pick up a textbook and read some notes or some, on a concept and can just immediately get it like that, um, there are other types of intelligences. For example, uh, skilled painters, uh, they would have what we call a, um, a visual or spatial intelligence. Now this is slightly different from something that a lot of people refer to as uh, learning styles. Some people might say that they are visual learners, they need to see something, uh, or that they are kinesthetic learners, they learn better when they're holding and manipulating objects. And this is essentially taking a single task and finding different approaches to it, or uh, different ways to uh, explain it. And the reason why that these are different is because um, someone who has a high spatial or visual intelligence, so, such as our skilled painter from before, they can still benefit from the logical reasoning. Um, maybe it's like a, a framework that applies to what makes a good painting. And vice versa, because people with a logical mathematical intelligence can still benefit from a visual reasoning. So I like something that we're seeing here. Now all I have to do is add them up. 300, and I like to check them off as I go. 50, 60, and 10. And that is your answer. 35 times 12 equals 420. Okay, now that we've used that visual tool, 
um, to help students understand what's actually going on, then we can use our standard way of adding up those values to get the answer 420 like we expected. Now I'm just reading through a lot of the comments as well and I, and I notice a lot of people are talking about um, just the speed of using this method. Um, obviously it is a lot slower than using that standard method which most people are used to. While they may be correct in terms of the practicality of using this method um, in a test or exam to multiply 35 times 12, I think they're also missing the point a little bit because when we're using this method, it's trying to help students develop that thing I refer to as mathematical thinking, right? Understanding what's going on and those steps that you're taking. And I want to refer to this comment in particular because I thought it was really interesting. I think a lot of the reasons why people have negative feelings towards math is because they don't see the purpose or the kind of reasoning behind the methods that we take. They're just trying to blindly follow these steps and, and these things aren't sinking in because they don't have an understanding of what's actually going on here. And this uh, visual area model, or area method, is a perfect way to try and help students break down and actually see why are we taking these steps? Why are we adding all of these different things together so that I can actually get my answer that I'm looking for? And I think the video itself and the reactions that we're having to it really speaks about the, the general sphere and attitudes towards education in the 21st century. Because a common argument is that, oh, well, we went through school using this old method and we were fine. <laughs> supposed to do it dad they want us to do it this i don't way. know that way why would they change math no, math is math okay, math dad. is math right and while that may be true it doesn't mean that we can't continue to build and adapt on those methods that we've used before I mean, how many times have you or, or students that you've been around um, looked at a formula under Pythagoras' theorem c squared equals to a squared plus b squared used it in a test and then forgotten it the next day right how many people really uh, look at Pythagoras' theorem and have a genuine understanding of, okay, what do these actually mean? These represent squares, or literally squares, on the sides of a right angle triangle. And that's how we develop or, or get that formula. And once we start to build on this mathematical thinking that we can have, we start to develop an understanding and actually an appreciation of what's actually going on here, right? It's a very intuitive way of looking at mathematics rather than just trying to rote learn or memorize some formulas to help me solve a problem. And I see it time and time again as a secondary uh, high school teacher, students trying to memorize something, um, not really understanding what's going on. And, and this type of mathematics um, is really similar to cooking in a sense, right? Because cooking, when you start off, you're just uh, memorizing steps and um, different amounts of ingredients. And, and it's okay to start off like that, right? Um, but if, if that's the only way you've been taught, that's the only way you know how to cook something, then it makes it very difficult to adapt for things, uh, whether you're changing the amount of people that you're um, catering for or whether you're catering for different tastes and things like that, right? If we don't understand how the flavors and different ingredients interact with each other, then we're not gonna have any um, idea or freedom to go beyond that recipe that we've been given. We're looking at multiplication from this video from before, um, but this can be applied to a whole variety of situations. Let's say I was looking at finding the area of a rectangle. Let's say it has length 12 and breadth 4. Right? That's a common place to apply multiplication to these practical problems. We know that if we multiply those two values together, that's the area of my rectangle. Right? But again, how many students understand how that works? Right? We, can, we can break these rectangles up into all these different squares, and when I count them all up, that's how I get uh, 48 square centimeters. Now, if I tweak that uh, question slightly. I wonder if a student who's been taught uh, simply that to find the area of a rectangle you multiply the side lengths together would be able to um, answer this, right? If I ask, now how many different rectangles can you draw with area of 48 square centimeters? Because someone who's just been taught uh, that rule of multiplying two side lengths together to find the area uh, wouldn't have a great conceptual understanding of what area is and can we reverse that kind of problem, right? There's a whole heap of different rectangles that we can create. And that visual method that the teacher showed in that video is a great way of actually seeing that in action. This is something that we call Bloom's Taxonomy, which is essentially a pyramid of all the different levels of activities that we can have. So initially, we might not start off with that uh, bottom layer of the pyramid, just remembering things and recalling facts. That's okay. Uh, but we want to extend that. We want to keep going. And we want students who can understand these problems and, and really apply them to a whole heap of different situations. And as we continue ascending through those layers of the pyramid, uh, we're continuing developing our students' um, ability to think critically and problem solve, not just within mathematics, but in all aspects of their lives. 
And the last thing I want to touch on is, on this is really, again, like I mentioned, this sphere of education when we're so performance driven, we've almost lost the ability to just have fun with learning and have a, have a play around with what the problems are asking us. Now, the actual teacher who recorded the original video uh, has actually been interviewed by a news station about, you know, what, why should we use this area model to solve um, 35 times 12 rather than the standard method. And so I definitely recommend that you check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. I mentioned earlier in the video that I've actually used this method in one of my classrooms. And although I was taught that step-by-step uh, -step way of solving the problem, um, it's, it's from a skill called completing the square, um, I wanted to give it a go because I saw a video um, that Eddie Wu did on this and the reactions I really think speak for themselves. Have a look. What do I need to add on in order to make this thing? And the answer is look, this is what and that's fine. Like, oh, oh, I should square it, right? So you add on 25, yeah, that's the thought I had. So you're like, oh, so this is x squared plus 29x. The reason I, I halved is so I can do yeah. this construction. And then the reason I square is so I can complete the square, right? So it's so beautiful when students themselves can appreciate um, what's actually going on and understand what's happening for the first time. You can see that this is a very similar situation, right? Um, we've used a visual model to help students develop their mathematical thinking. Um, now, when I tried this um, method and to, to show students this different way of seeing the same problem, I did get some mixed reactions. Initially, some students thought that it was more confusing because they were used to that step-by-step -step method. Um, but after the class um, happened, a lot of students did come up to me later and say, oh, thank you, sir, for showing me that. I actually have a better idea of um, what's actually happening and, and why we're just adding these numbers to complete the square, right? It makes a lot more sense to me now. And again, I think that really just highlights um, the nature of education. We, we have a classroom of 30 students. Every one of them is different. Every one of them thinks in different ways. And I really think it's our job as teachers, as educators, uh, to try and find a way that works for them and explain it in a way which um, um, they can appreciate and understand um, why we're doing these things. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, reaction video to that. I did go off tangent a little bit, um, but um, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think that we should use this area model to help students develop their understanding or should we just stick to the standard method? I'd love to hear your thoughts and your reasons below. Until next time.